Have you guys ever heard of the guy who traded a little red paper clip for a house? So basically, the story goes, this guy started with a little red paper clip. He traded it in for a pen and then a doorknob and then I think a can of propane, a generator, and then 15 trades later, this turned into a house. And this story has inspired many to see how far they can go trading up. And so I wanna try something similar with my turbo Honda swapped Mercedes. I bought my Honda powered Mercedes C240 out of New Jersey for only $6,000. And after a few auto parts store parking lot repairs, it made it 800 miles back home to Chicago without any issues. The Mahonda Cadiz is a super cool and unique build as it was converted from all wheel drive to rear wheel drive with a six speed manual transmission uses a very powerful Honda ECU and digital screen and put down over 400 wheel horsepower with its turbocharged K24 engine. The car straight rips and runs well, but I did discover some shortcomings in the swap and it needs some love to make it 100%. And to be honest, I've simply lost interest. This was definitely an impulse buy and it's not a swap that I would have thought to do myself. So it's time to move on and try out this little experiment to see how far I can take trading engine swapped cars. Right now, my end goal is to eventually trade up to a $30,000 car, and I have no clue if this will actually work, but it all starts now with trying to trade for another engine swapped Mercedes. Push button start. There's our Lambo cluster. Six speed manual. And then check this out, second gear. This is a four cylinder, mind you. It just rips. <laughs> In 600 feet, turn left. We're almost there. We're about to go check out this LS swapped Mercedes. I'm so excited. This car looks pretty clean. I do think it's worth more than this car, so I'll have to bring some cash to the table, but we'll see what we can work out. Your destination is on the right. Oh, there it is. There it is. Awesome. Love the monoblock wheels. Can't wait to check this out. Let's do it. All right, we're waiting for the owner to come out, but this is a 1991 124 chassis Mercedes E-Class. So this is a 300D. It started off life as a diesel, and now it has a 5.3 liter LS that we're gonna take a look at in a moment. Oh, this is really cool. <laughs> Still has the badging for the diesel engine. Wow, I gotta say right off the bat, the body looks really nice. Looks a little bit better than mine. So about a week ago, I put up a post on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube that I wanted to trade my turbo Honda swapped Mercedes for anything that's swapped. So the prerequisites here were pretty basic. It had to be a car that ran and drove and that had an engine swap done. So I got a bunch of emails and this one was only about 45 minutes away. And it's a Mercedes with an LS and supposed Supposedly the AC works, so it might be kind of a nice car. This definitely fits the bill. What in the world? Look at this. A Mondeo? What? Okay, so Stan, the owner of the Mercedes, owns a really cool motorcycle shop. I saw pictures online, but this is insane. Hey, Stan. Hey, good to meet you, Stan. How are you? Dance for you guys. Oh, nice. Sweet. All right, so Stan owns Moto and Motor. Yes. And we're in Northbrook, Illinois. Dude, this is insane. <laughs> How long have you been in business? Uh, since 2009, wow. professionally. All right, so you answered my, my calling that I wanted to trade my Honda K-swapped Mercedes. Correct. For another swapped vehicle. Correct. Can you show us the uh, the 120? Yeah, let's go right, take a look at it. Take a look. Okay, so Stan, I gotta, I gotta ask right off the bat. <laughs> okay. I did not notice this. I, I literally just did a walk around in the car. What in the world is going on right here? So the nipple was installed in order to clear the throttle body motor. Really? And this was done a long time ago. I believe now you can buy them, they're more compact. Okay. Um, there was really no plan. Originally it was just a hole and then my buddy had uh, years ago put like a cap on here and welded it so it's enclosed. So your friend built this car, right? A, a friend of his built the car. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry, a friend of his built the car. Well, I gotta I say, it, it, it blends in well because <laughs> I did not catch that. Did any of you guys seriously catch that when I just showed the car a minute ago? I didn't see it. So how many, how many miles have you driven this thing? Uh, you think maybe a thousand maybe. okay yeah. how, how many how long have you owned it uh it's been at least a couple of years i honestly don't remember now okay yeah it's been at least a couple of years oh the gauges are really cool very nice fitment this is amazing they house them all inside of the original cluster all right little carbon fiber wrap accents and this is a 4l60 so it is an automatic i know i'm trading a six-speed manual car for an automatic but who knows? Maybe maybe it'll work out. I don't know. We got to look around. The 124 chassis Mercedes is a tank. The interior is actually held up pretty well. Look at this. Dash isn't cracked at all. This driver's seat, eh, 
little something here, no biggie. And it's definitely got that old Mercedes smell. <laughs> if sure. you guys know, you, you know what I'm talking about. Wow, really nice back seats. Do you know how many miles are on the body? I would say a couple hundred thousand. Probably. Okay. Yeah, that's it, my where, guess. Where is it from? It's not rusted out, it looks like. No, it was a fairly well-kept car. I got it out of Missouri. Where it came from prior to that, I don't know. Okay. Uh, so. All right, we got to get to the good stuff right away. What do we got going on here? Okay, now I can see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Look at that. I, I haven't seen a throttle body like this in a long time. All right, and here's the famous cap nipple. We're going to call that the nip, the nip, the nipple cap, Stan. It's already getting nicknames for parts that are welded to the hood. I don't know if that's good or bad. Whoa, this exhaust is very, very interesting. What in the world? Well, I'll tell you one thing, Stan. It's got head studs. So that's a good sign that at some point they wanted to boost this or maybe it was boosted. I'm not sure. But yeah, this is very interesting. Just like how interesting it's been watching my kid learn how to code with CodeMonkey.com. CodeMonkey is an award-winning site that helps kids learn to code and kids love it because it's game-based and fun. Look at that, Nona. <laughs> My son loves Code Monkey, so right now he's working on a challenge and he's coding right now. And what he's trying to accomplish is making this beaver finish the dam. So he's typing in the codes here, presses play, and we're gonna find out if he did this right and if this beaver will be successful. Nice, he got another one. All right, challenge 20 completed. That's out of 40, but the way he's just kind of glued to this computer, he'll be done with this challenge in no time. Good job, dude. Okay, so don't tell him right now. He's not even listening to me right now. He's so in the zone, but he's learning right now. And it's just like a game. He's been at this for like 30, 40 minutes and he'll keep going forever and ever. So this is the beginning. This is how people start to learn how to code. And CodeMonkey.com has programs for all ages from the CodeMonkey Junior program to Python and game development for teens. And they offer text-based coding, allowing kids to code like real developers. Learning how to code is like learning a whole new language and it can be so valuable in opening up a ton of opportunities in this digital world that we all live in. So if you guys wanna get started right now, then click on my link down below and use coupon code CMLSC25. That's gonna get you 25% off any paid home plan. So check it out down below. Now let's get back to the show. So this is an iron block 5.3. You can see the block here is kind of rusted. Uh, aluminum LS cylinder heads. This is your pretty typical kind of budget swap as far as LS engine, nothing wrong with it, but these are pretty inexpensive. They came in a bajillion Silverados, right. vans, pickup trucks, all sorts of stuff. Uh, but okay, yeah, it fits in here like, like a glove. All right, so we have the original 124 AC fans, it looks like there, an aftermarket fan here. Uh, this does have power steering and it has an ac compressor that is awesome first start of my maybe next new car i don't know a ah, little belt squeal no biggie we could fix that oh yeah look at that belt she's wobbling around might be the wrong size or the tensioner is bad it's been sitting for about a year in storage so we just pulled it out yesterday oh these gauges are so cool that belt squeal is not cool. Whoa! Oh, did you hear that? This thing sounds wicked! What in the world? I was not expecting this. Woo! A 300D to those who don't know what lies beneath the capped hood. Okay, Stan's letting me take this thing out for a little test drive. It hasn't been driven in about a year and I haven't been in a 124 chassis in a long long time as I look around for manual sweet seat buttons this was luxurious we'll mess with the AC later that window works um, Wow, this is intense whoa okay that's a lot of steps to get into drive oh wow the pedal this is so weird the accelerator pedal is like a lot higher than the brake pedal so when you're on your brakes you gotta kind of like lift your leg up a little. That's weird. Look what's pulling in. Oh, I think I was checking the car out. Oh, it is peppy. I gotta say, this has to be a stock torque converter because it just goes right off the line. It's not, it's not mushy. You're not waiting for anything to rev up. Whoa, I wonder how this thing is geared. 
my gosh, I have to like learn how to drive this thing. Just a little bit of throttle, it just goes nuts. <laughs> Definitely has a uh, shift kit or something in the tune. This thing shifts nicely though, like very firm, kind of hard, probably chirps them into like every year. All right, it is like 100 degrees out. Let's see if this AC works. It's got automatic climate control. All right, this is something I don't remember. Which which one is just vent? Send it to the vent. Hey, I think the AC needs to charge. It is coming out of the vent, at least one of them. Whoa, it moves, it moves pretty good. I don't think much is done to this 5.3. Uh, it is naturally aspirated, obviously, but it moves. Okay, it handles pretty well. I think he said he put some Bilstein shocks and lowering springs, but it's tight. Like, the steering suspension is in good shape. It rides nice, too. Good stance. Brakes are decent. <laughs> Just chirps them, like, all the time. Not necessarily something I'm super into, but kind of cool. Just considering what type of car this is. I love the belt squeak though, that's that's my favorite. I know this is probably a steering wheel repair, but it, it's kind of like one of those little lines they put at the top of the steering wheel. It's kind of a race car thing, it's kind of like that. All right, let's give it a little rip here. Okay, I think that started in second. All right, let's see what it does off the line. Okay. You know, I gotta say, I think the, uh, the turbo Honda Mercedes might be faster. I mean, obviously this is way heavier and it's naturally aspirated. Oh yeah, this thing is. Whoa, I did not even do that on purpose. That was like an eighth throttle. It's weird right off the, it's got one of those like pedal commanders it feels like. It is so, so touchy. And this is definitely an open diff. Okay. <laughs> no, it feels good. It feels, it feels like a stockish, 5.3 liter and there's a possibility that maybe they even lowered the compression because we saw those head studs we saw those exhaust manifolds it looks like they were maybe getting ready for boost um so this could be like a you know a 300 ish horsepower ls that's pretty much what it feels like and it's kind of a heavier car <laughs> it sounds so cool except for the belt squeak i don't know guys what do you think should i trade stan my honda katie's mercedes thing whatever we ended up calling that I don't, I don't know i mean i know i want to do it that's for sure it's just going to depend how much cash i got to throw on top of it if it makes any sense and we got to find out if he even wants it so let's go back we'll show stan around the honda katie's he's seen all the videos and all that so he knows generally what's wrong with it but i'm just going to kind of go over everything with him once more just so he fully understands that that car does still need some work where you know this one does too but i think i think my car's got him beat in the sense that it needs it needs more love. Like it? I like it. I like it. Good. Man, the throttle response is intense. It's insane. I told like, you. Right off the bat, it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. It throws you back. It's like this. Yeah, but then it, but then after that, it kind of just feels like your stockish 5.3 LS. You know, it's it runs good though. It shifts good. Yeah. And it handles. Um, yeah, I think it's I think it's pretty solid. You wanna you wanna yeah. check out mine? Let's check that out. All right. All right, Stan. As you saw in the videos, this is a K24 Honda engine. <laughs> in a c240 this is a 2004 it was a formatic all-wheel drive car but now it's all rear wheel drive um it's got a turbo it's got a water to air intercooler system a nice fuel system uh, a really nice and expensive Honda computer with a digital uh dash so we added some stuff up here and i think that there's about twelve thousand dollars worth of parts and car involved here um something like that but like I was saying, it's still a project. Like it needs yeah, little, yeah. it needs little odds and ends. They made it here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, no, it drives, it drives great. The most notable issue with this car is the transmission, not the transmission itself. But if you watch the last video on this car, it's it's kind of notchy. It's it's a six-speed manual out of a Chevy Colorado, um, but it's a good transmission. What I think is wrong here are the hydraulics. So. Slow. Well, yeah, it's, it's, I think it needs more pressure because when you're trying to shift it at wide open throttle, it's hard to like bang gears. I think the whole hydraulic system needs to be kind of rethought of maybe, or just a bigger master. And then also, you guys saw this in the last video, the adapter plate from the K24 to this Chevy Colorado transmission, it was cut out of plastic. It was like 3D printed and it, it offers a little bit of flex. So when you push the clutch in, you can actually see this thing flexing a little. And I think 
If it's not the hydraulics, if it doesn't need a master cylinder, it just needs that like, to be made out of aluminum. Yeah, other than that, it, it runs beautifully. It was dyno tuned, 402 wheel horsepower. Oh, wow. And then everything else you saw in the video that it needs, like obviously the bumper yeah, and the front. Bumper saw that. My, my plan was to go C230 sport compressor uh, bumpers or C55 bumpers, something like that. You wanna go for a ride? Sure, let's yeah. take it for a spin. Cool. All right, so you just turn the key to position two like this, mm -hmm. and then it's got oh. push button start. This is one of my favorite parts. It's got this cool digital dash, and it boots up, and you can change you can change this up, but right now it has the Lamborghini instrument cluster layout. Check it out. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Isn't that cool? <laughs> All right, so it takes a little bit of getting used to on the clutch. It's not hard or anything. No, no, just... Uh quick release yeah so here take that clutch pedal and just give it a little pump yeah there you go now push it down there you go yeah it's I, I think right now that that plate is flexing a little okay so if you thought the throttle response was pretty awesome on on your v8 one feel just a little throttle and how quick the spool isn't that awesome it's quick Sounds pretty good, right? Yeah, it does. Sounds great. This is one of those silly cars that just puts a <laughs> smile on your face. <laughs> Stan, Stan's true. got it. Stan's got it too. It just it's Absolutely like what are, true. what are we doing here? We're in a Mercedes and it's making all sorts of Honda noises. <laughs> but in a really good way. Like a lot oh, of Hondas yeah. kind of have that bark can kind of sound. And this one doesn't. It's it's kind of deeper no, it's, and nice. Yeah. It's got a nice pulling sound. Yeah. What's cool from what you guys have told me with the Honda Data computer, you can make this thing do like a no lift shift, which I think would be beneficial, you know, with any four cylinder with the turbo, but with the hydraulic system for the clutch, so you just can't bang gears. All right, what do you think? I think it's really quick and looks like it's, it's a fun car. There's no doubt about it. It's definitely different and it comes on boost. It's just insane for, you're, you're thinking you're sitting in a performance car, like a, you know, 911 turbo or something, <laughs> but it's not. It's a C240. <laughs> So we had a bunch of loose bolts. That could be mm -hmm. a lot of our rattling noise. Yeah, and it's that, bags. that's made of plastic. Right, we're gonna tighten this up. They 3D printed, printed that. Stan, I know, I know you watch the videos, but I just, I wanna show you everything. Sure. <laughs> so the back bumper, a uh, little bit of paint fade on there, you know, little odds and ends, but these are uh, real Mercedes AMG wheels with really good tires. So those are quite valuable. Um, but overall, there's no rust on this car. Uh, it's got a little key <laughs> right there. Someone keyed it. Here. And I was also going to do the C230 or the C55 springs and brakes. I actually have the brake calipers in the trunk, so those come with the car, uh, but it'll bring the ride height down a little bit. So I think a little bit of freshening with the bumpers, some brakes, some suspension. Um, and then you said you have the ability to cut the plastic adapter in between the trans and engine out of aluminum? Yes, we have capabilities for that. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, I think that, I think that's it. That's pretty much all you need on this thing. What do you think? Well. You wanna make a deal? Let's try and make a deal. All right, what do you think yours is worth? 13.5. Okay. I think my car's worth about $9,000. I paid six for it, to be fair. I put like about $1,000 into it. Sure. But after we got this back and counted up all the parts that went into it, I think it's about a $9,000 car okay. that needs a couple thousand dollars worth of miscellaneous to make it nice again. Right. Um, so you're at 13.5. Correct. Okay. That's what I have in the car plus the <clears throat> suspension and the work we've done. Okay. So, to so total? 13.5 is total. Total what you have? Okay. So I think mine's worth nine. You think yours is worth 13.5. What if I give you this car and $3,000 cash? That's something we could make happen? I'd like to be a little bit higher than that on a trade difference. Where's Ed? Where's Vin Wiki Ed, the shrewd negotiator when you need him? <laughs> I'm so bad at this stuff. <laughs> Listen, All right, what do you- what? Both of us have put a lot of effort into everything. There's no doubt about well, it. Well, I haven't put much effort into this car, to be honest eh. with you. I haven't done all that much to yeah. it. Well, and then your friend or someone built that thing as well, so. Right, so there's a, a lot of effort. There's a lot of things going on. I think trade difference number wise is obviously 4,500. Uh, I would say 4,000 would probably make me comfortable okay. to do the deal. Okay, So I think that would be more than enough to get this thing up up to up to snuff right you know right. with bumpers and and stuff like that all right guys i'm gonna i'm just gonna do this i like the 124 it's cool <laughs> and now I, you know what though now i'm like a little worried that i'm gonna end up keeping that thing so the whole point i i wanted like i told you yeah. is i want to trade for swapped vehicles and Correct. see how far i can get can this go. to go right who knows maybe i swap into some 
supercharged LS Lamborghini or something. I have no idea. Now I really like your car See, you <laughs> or my like, car. <laughs> you might enjoy it. You might enjoy it. Uh, all right. So. Uh, I got to go get some cash no and we'll problem. make the deal. Well, here. All right. Here, so. I did it. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> it's just so silly. I'm going to miss this car, but obviously I'm not that into it because I'm trading it away for a 124 chassis LS swap 300D. I didn't think this was gonna happen. I got a lot of really interesting emails from you guys and messages on social media on cars that I should trade for. Although some of them weren't swapped at all. They were just like totally normal cars. But anyway, I landed on this one. It ended up being local. I did want a little bit of an adventure. We're gonna go in the bank. Um, so this isn't that big of an adventure and I think the 124 is gonna make it. Uh, but after we make this deal, we're gonna bring it back to legit street quarters, lift it up in the air and, and see what we find underneath. Hopefully there's no surprises, but Stan seems like a straight up guy. so. I think it's going to be okay. All right, here is a clean title for a C240 Mercedes. Okay. And four thousand dollars cash. Okay. There you go. And a key. Jeez. Yes, it has a Band-Aid key tag. I didn't do that. <laughs> All right, that's how it came. Right. Um, and then other the key, your, keys are in keys it. Keys are in it. Yes. I got my keys binder. You got everything. I think whatever accessories or parts are in the trunk, they're in the trunk. So. Okay. Cool. And uh, that's it. All right. All right. Thanks, Alex, Sam. Thank you. Appreciate it's it. It's good to meet you. Likewise. And likewise. I'm going to bring you some go kart rims with new tires I need mounted, anytime. if that's okay. Yeah, anytime. All right. Anytime. Good deal. All right. Thanks, <laughs> All right. Guys. We're heading back to legit street cars. We'll see what we, we really got ourselves into here. Goodbye, Honda Katie's and hello, LS swapped 124 300D. Look at these mono blocks. Oh, look at these tires. These tires are pretty much shot. And they're kind of old, too. Hang on. Let me get to see what's in the trunk here. Does this thing sound weird to you guys? Is it missing? I don't know. It's got really old gas in it, so that could be something. We'll have to look into it. Hey, look at this. We got some Bilstein shocks and H&R springs. I know this, this has different springs on it. Oh yeah, these are just the old ones. And then we have new new parts in here. Lemforta. What do we got? Oh no, these are the old ball joints they saved. All right. Oh, and then he told me there were some gauges in here that used to be in the car. A boost gauge, an EGT gauge, and an exhaust pressure gauge. Okay, at first I was like, wait a minute, this was boosted. But then I'm like, yeah, it was. It was a boosted turbo diesel. Okay, so I'm trying to get the AC to work. He did say there was a button that I have to press. I don't know what this screen does. There's a button here that doesn't seem to do anything. I'm just kind of feeling around for an AC button. I'll have to ask him and see where this button is for the AC. I'm gonna go do that now, it's hot. All right, Stan's gonna show us the button. The, the switch right here. Oh, that turns on the compressor? That's supposed to turn the compressor on, yeah. It's been sitting for a year, but uh, you might have to check pressure just in case. Okay. But the switch is lo located right here. Okay, cool. Okay. Thanks, Stan. No problem. All right. Good luck. Uh-huh, there it is. Would've taken me a while to find that. Okay, this AC definitely does not work. It's hot. It does chirp them into second. It runs good, it runs good. I think that's just how the exhaust sounds at idle. It's not missing, it, it runs really nice. It's smooth. It doesn't shake the car, vibrate or anything, and this transmission is spot on. I can't wait to go check out these receipts. That is typically something you do before you buy a car or trade for a car. I don't do this in a very traditional way, if you haven't noticed in my videos. It's either sight unseen or a big mystery, but that's that's the fun. One thing I noticed here is this oil pressure gauge is going nuts. Right now it's pegged at 80, which usually just indicates that the sensor is bad. Hold on a second though. Oh yeah, then look at this. It just goes wild. Sometimes it gets really low. Okay, it's like right when I let off. Yep, yep, yep. It's going down, 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 down. And then look at that, nine PSI, it's flashing. And then it goes back up. Okay, all right, well, that's something else we gotta look into. We have the belt squeak, the AC, the oil pressure that's going wild. Hopefully that's just a gauge slash sensor issue. Ooh, it's going down to zero. Okay, that can't be real, right? A lot of these older LSs had sending unit issues. This could just be a junkyard 5.3 with the original little sender unit. Okay, we're good, we're good. Fingers crossed. We only have to go 45 minutes this time, okay? I've driven way, way sketchier cars, way longer distances. All right, let's try opening up the sunroof. It works. This is also something you don't do usually until you get back to your house and it might rain. 
So now let's see the moment of truth. Does it close? Yes, it does. Oh, almost. Okay, there we go. Yay! Close. That is some 124 quality right there. These things are so solid. And this one's even more solid than I remember. They were very, very floaty, especially the 300D model. But with the lowering springs and different shocks or whatever they did under there, it feels so good. This is this is like a 500E, really. We're almost at legit street quarters, going 70 miles an hour, straight as an arrow. Well, I'm making a turn right now, okay? But it's straight as an arrow normally. The handling is really nice on this car. I, there's no slop in it whatsoever. This is just, it's nicely balanced. Like this had a big, heavy diesel engine and these came with V8s. So having the LS in there, it just fits right at home. It's really nice guys. As long as the oil pressure issue isn't a real issue, we fix the belt squeak, we got to charge up the AC and then who knows what else we find right now during the inspection. I think this is a good deal. I had about 7,000 into the other car. I paid a four, so I'm at 11,000 into this. But if we can fix everything and it has working AC and we buff it out and just kind of sort any other little issues, I think it's worth way more than that. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think this car is worth fully sorted. This thing sounds so crazy. It's basically a 500E. If you guys aren't too familiar, this is a 500E. It was a very limited production run, 124 chassis E-Class. It was their high performance version. So it got the five liter V8 from the 129 chassis SL. It got the SL brakes. Uh, it got special seats inside, which this doesn't have, unfortunately. It was slightly lowered like this one. It had different wheels as well. Uh, it was kind of like the E55 before the E55 came out. Really cool car, very sought after, super expensive now. And this, in a lot of ways, is better like performance wise, not rarity or anything cool like that, but this has a more powerful engine. It also has a four speed automatic transmission like the 500E um, and it's lowered, it handles well. So did I just get like a really, really budget 500E? I think I, I kind of got a fake one. Let's dive into this madness right here. See what we can find out about this build. Hopefully we can kind of gauge how much was put into this build. Okay, Dakota Digital. Okay, that's probably what the cluster is. Tires done in 2007, probably doesn't apply anymore. Factory Mercedes books. Wiring schematic for a 2005 Silverado with a 5.3. That's most likely what the engine came out of. More wiring schematics, okay. LT1swap.com. Instructions for the gauge cluster. Lots of wiring schematics. We got a receipt for a belt tensioner lever, okay. Camshaft installation procedures. Does this have a little cam? Doesn't sound like it, but it could be a little boost cam. Trick flow specialties. Does this have heads on it too? No way. This might have an aftermarket cam and cylinder heads. We are definitely boroscoping. I want to see if it's got different pistons too. Okay, we got a lot of receipts from, I believe, before the swap. So a lot of this stuff kind of doesn't matter. Yeah, this is definitely from when it was a diesel. They got a bunch of fuel injection lines. And then I think it's a three owner vehicle. It came with, this isn't a Carfax. I don't know what this is, but no accidents. Nothing. Yeah, here we go. It's an auto check. Last odometer reading 109,000. That'd be like the lowest 124 diesel ever. All right, well, not much for adding up what it costs to build this thing. A lot of these receipts are from when it had a diesel engine. So it was at least maintained back then. I guess that's cool. Okay, I got to figure out if we have heads and any internal engine work. Ah! Let's see what we have for cylinder heads here. There's usually a stamping here from the factory. What does that say? That is not factory. TFS LS1 1X, I believe is what that says. TSF LS1, oh, there we go. Get out of here. We have trick flow heads on this thing. There's 1300 each. Wow, CNC ported, 64cc chamber. Yeah, they work with the 4853576. Nice. We got trick flow heads, $2,600 worth of trick flow heads, ARP head studs. I'm sure this thing has a cam in it, right? We got to figure out the compression ratio, although I'll need to know what pistons are in this thing. This had to have been set up for boost. We are going to find little tidbits of boost stuff going on here, I, I think. I hope. I don't know why I hope that I'm supposed to just trade this for another swap vehicle, but now I'm getting excited. Okay. Now, how bad is it to get to the oil level 
sender here. Oh, it's not bad at all. On a lot of the trucks, you have to take the intake manifold off. It's right there. Look at our red transmission too. Red valve covers, and they did a coil bracket relocation, sort of. This part's a little odd because normally the coils just sit directly on the valve covers. Um, I wonder if they did this though so they can make custom spark plug wires to fit around these headers. That's gotta be why they did this. And you know what, with that coming up, it would have hit the coil pack probably or come really close. They went through a lot of effort to get this exhaust system to work on here. And I wanna know why. Why, fake 500D, why? I wanna pull the plugs and start boroscoping, but it is really hot under here. So while this cools off, let's lift her up. Guys, look at this. All of these factory plastic mounting points are intact. You know it's a good old Mercedes when you see that. A lot of times these are missing. And then the rocker's all crushed in and crusty looking. This looks so good. And we're gonna keep it that way. Here we go, here we go. What are we gonna find? I think we're gonna find good stuff, guys. I think this was a good swap. Fingers crossed. I'm noticing things on the body of this car as we go along. Did you guys see this on the fender? What is going on right here? That is not factory? Yeah, the driver's side doesn't have it. Guys, let me know, is that a factory option on something? I mean, it looks like it would be helpful for cold air induction. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's definitely what they were using it for. Look at that, they have a circle cut out perfectly and that looks like fiberglass in there. There's no way this is stock. Kind of cool though, especially looking at this car. It's, it's kind of a sleeper. If it's not running, it just looks like a normal one. But if you see this, you know something's up. Let me know in the comments. Is this a 300D thing? Is this an aftermarket thing? Is it a 500D thing? I, I don't know. I doubt it. Okay, hang on. This is killing me here. Here's a 91 500E, so the regular one, nothing. Let's look up the 300D. Is this a diesel? Oh, it is totally the diesel. No way. That is so cool. Look at that. That's where the factory intake goes. I knew it looked too good. Yeah, look at it on the inside. This is too nice and too factory. That is cool. But man, what a missed opportunity to not simply use that. I would put the air filter right here. I mean, I guess this is technically colder, especially with that right there, but that's, that's way too cool. I love this. Oh man, I like this car even more now. I'm getting attached. Here we go, here we go, people. We've been here many, many times. We've seen lots of crusty vehicles on this rack, but I think this is gonna be different because of this. This is the first part of the underneath I've seen and it is, it's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. I know people throw this around a lot. You could eat off this surface, blah, blah, blah. This surface is actually, you know, dirty, but it's so nice compared to what I work on. I would, I would eat off this. I would put a sandwich on it. It would get a little dirty and I would eat the dirt. That's how happy I am about seeing that right now. Oh, wait a minute, hold on, this is weird though. Not happy about this, oh, okay. All right, no big deal. I thought for a second that the spring had like busted through the lower control arm, which you know wouldn't be a big deal. We just put a new one on, but something definitely hit right here. Uh, okay, here is our inline fuel pump and there is the filter. All right, you know, not bad. You know, a little cracking in this hose. I'll have to fix that. And we might want to just get a new filter. This just looks like a standard filter we can get from the auto parts store. This is clean, guys. This is clean. I think it spent most of its life in Missouri and then Illinois, but definitely not driven in the salt and it's really low mileage, honestly, for a 1991. But I mean, we have nuts that would actually come loose without heat. That is, that is a big, big deal. Uh, this is an open diff. It is a factory Mercedes differential. What do we got going on for the drive shaft? They definitely did something here. We have a PEM, a PEM racing drive shaft cool and here is a four speed gm transmission and i'm assuming this is a 4l60e yeah that's definitely what this is my 1000 horsepower turbo trans am has a built 4l60e so they can be built up properly to hold a ton of power and what this engine is producing now is not a lot of power so this transmission will last pretty much forever we got a little bit of oil leakage going on and some gigantic oil fittings wow that's crazy that's a little bit of jb weld Maybe that's why it's leaking. I don't know. These are the trans cooler lines. They're right up on the exhaust. So we'll just have to move those out of the way. Uh, looks like it has brand new Bilsteins, brand new ball joints, tie rods. So they stuck with the factory gearbox system. No rack and pinion. Um, is it missing the steering shock though? I thought these all had a steering shock. Maybe not. And this is something I've never seen before. The Pitman arm has been welded together and modified or bent or something. Yeah, hey, I haven't seen that. I don't know. Let me know. Have you guys ever seen that? That's weird. It looks very oddly specific though. Like, I don't think it was a repair. I think they 
they did that for a reason. Not sure what the reason is though. Whoa, all right. Well, this is something. This may be why the AC doesn't work. This belt is off. So, I mean, this isn't the belt squeal. That's, that might be this tensioner here, but this is something. We're gonna have to figure out why this flew off. Hopefully it's no big deal and the AC actually does work. Man, we can get really lucky with that. Does this just need a couple tensioners and belts? We've really gone full circle here. This has a Ford Motorcraft oil filter. That's what those gigantic lines are for. So they've done an oil filter relocation and that's likely because of all the steering stuff in this area. This is where the factory oil filter would have been. So that makes sense. And then this is an aftermarket oil pan. You can see the sticker right there. So everything clears. And these are the pedestals that were welded to the factory subframe and done really nice. CX Racing makes that little adapter plate right there. And what's awesome is these aren't solid. These are urethane mounts. That's why it's so smooth. I mean, hydraulic fluid filled engine mounts would be a lot smoother, but when you're in this car, it doesn't shake at all. It's, it's really good. I have the poly mounts in the Turbo Trans Am, same deal. Even with an aftermarket camshaft, it feels great in there. I hate when you get solid mounts and it just shakes you the whole time. It's like, why, why are you doing that to yourself? Don't, don't do that. Uh, this car is clean though. I mean, this is nice. Look at these beautiful frame rails. The upper spring perch isn't rusted out. That was an issue. It is nice. This air filter needs to be cleaned. Uh, this is a cooler. Oh, this is a transmission cooler. Oh, okay, it's got a fan. Yeah, it's, it's a nice transmission cooler. It's getting air right from these little slits here in the front bumper and a fan. I mean, that that's hardcore, man. They were not messing around. This is really dirty in the tire hits it, which means it needs to be relocated to the factory 300D air filter location, obviously. And here's a big, huge spall fan. Awesome. There we go, that's fixed. So here you can see the madness with this exhaust. So it goes all the way up there. And here is our crossover tube and it connects right in there. It's kind of hard to see. And then here is essentially your downpipe right here. And it just goes into a single exhaust all the way back. So. I can see that there isn't a lot of room here to run a proper exhaust, let's say with headers or exhaust manifolds where it would come out here and it would come out here. All of the steering system is in the way. So it's possible that they didn't have a turbo in mind and that this was just a necessity to just physically fit this engine with an exhaust in the car. Yeah, this exhaust is pretty wild. Uh, there we go. That's the crossover from the other side coming from there. And then it comes together with the exhaust that goes all the way around like this. This is crazy. Uh, and then that's that downpipe right there. Um, yeah, I guess you could split this off and put a turbo right here, but uh, I don't know if they specifically designed this with a turbo in mind. And I have no idea what brand exhaust this is. Let me know guys, what what do we have? What What is going on here? I can tell you what's going on here though. This tensioner is shot. Oh yeah, it feels horrible. Definitely need a new tensioner. This is its resting position with no tension. Oh yeah. I wanna try and get this AC belt back on. This tensioner seems okay. The AC compressor seems to be fine. It spins, the tensioner pulley's fine. The belt was off, I don't know why. Let's go see if the AC works. Right, let's see what this sounds like. I had belt noise before. Let me uh, turn on my AC real quick. Oh, it did something. Idle went up and actually fixed the belt squeak, turning that on. Let's see if we get cold air. Yeah, it's still nothing. Still don't get any cold air. Yeah, the belt's still on, hasn't flown off yet. Uh, I think that tensioner is a little shaky. Yeah, that tensioner is making a little noise. Could have thrown the belt, um, but yeah, this compressor is not actually kicking on. Could just be low. Spinning well though. That's good. Ah, it did it. Oh wait, the fan kicked on. Okay, still, yeah, that's not working. Oh, this thing keeps on revving up on its own. That is not kicking in though. It wants to work, it wants to have AC. It's probably just low, so we'll have to check that out too. I'm making a list though, people, I'm making a list. We will sort this car out. Yeah, the fans definitely work. And uh, now that I've heated this engine up, let's, uh, let's get our, hands in here somehow to pull plugs this is not this is not fun oh man this is horrible to do plugs on okay i guess that's swap life for you though i mean something's got to give right i think the easiest plugs to get to are ironically the passenger side because it has the most exhaust tubing going on and i was being very impatient and burned my hand but i have let it sit and it's good it's good it's fine. A little hot. It's okay. 
Uh, let's see. Can we get can we get a plug out? Oh, we can get a wire off. Sweet. Okay, ratchet is on. All right, here we go. Do we have colder plugs for boost? Oh no, we just have factory AC Delco plugs. Okay, and they look pretty nice. Little oil here, no biggie. But wow, they look really good. You know what time it is, boroscope time. Are we gonna find factory pistons or forged ones? Do we have a fully built engine in the 500E? I mean 300D, whatever. Here we go into the depths of this 5.3 liter. Okay, pistons up quite a bit. Woo, hold on a second though. Look at that cylinder, that is pretty. We gotta move this piston down though. That is kind of too far up to really get a good view at it. It kind of looks like a stock one though. But yeah, that cylinder liner looks good. All right, I'm gonna move this piston. I'm just turning the crank right now. Normally I would pull another plug, but they're very difficult to get out. But look at that. Look at that cylinder, that thing is sweet. Oh yeah, this is in great shape. And there's a little directional dimple there. Um, yeah, let me know guys in the comments, but these do look like just regular stock pistons. Uh, carbon buildup is not that bad. Everything looks really good. But yeah, it's probably a stock bottom N53 and they just put the trick flow heads, most likely a cam, maybe new lifters and whatnot, but whoa, this thing is in good shape. That is one of the nicest cylinder walls we've seen on this channel. All right. If this is the stock 5.3 out of a 2005 Silverado with these specific trick flow heads, I'd have to kind of do a little bit more research, but let me know in the comments if you know. I'm curious if this has lower compression than normal because of the cylinder heads, um, and if they were gonna boost it, I don't know. But either way, it's probably like a, I don't know, 300-ish horsepower, little 5.3 LS, done very, very nicely to fit into this car, and it just, it just works. We just need to fix a few things, clean it up, and this should be a, a nice car outside of, of this. We gotta fix that. I have hooked up our AC machine to the high and the low side. It's my first time using this guy. I got it from Ben Pack, and uh, we just filled it up with 134A refrigerant. Let's open these guys up. All right, what do we have? Uh, about 50 PSI high and low side. Um, that's pretty normal, but let's recover anyway. Cover, and there's no start or okay. It's, it's a thumbs up. There we go. All right, sucking it out right now. Ah, what stinks is that we don't really know what this is supposed to take, so we'll have to fill it based off of pressures provided the AC compressor actually kicks on. The recovery only took a few minutes because it recovered like 0.1 pounds, so we're gonna put it into a vacuum, see if we have a leak now. The vacuum, we don't need it that long. Let's just go 10 minutes for now. It says press okay, but it's just a thumbs up. Man, I like it, don't get me wrong, I think it's cool. Thumbs up. And this is stop. Two, one. Finished. All right, cool. So this does an automatic leak test for 10 minutes. So you can see here it's at minus 30 and hopefully this doesn't creep back up to zero and it stays exactly where it is. Okay, so we have 10 minutes to go on the vacuum test and this is a crazy coincidence. So I've never owned an LS swapped car. This is my first and I just got a call from a delivery driver that another German LS swapped car that I bought like a few weeks ago is here. It came all the way from Arizona and it's here. I, I didn't think it was gonna be in today. Uh, I'll give you guys a, like a really tiny sneak peek. It should be pulling up any minute. All right, guys, there's your sneak peek right, right there. That's all you're getting as a helicopter goes by. It's LS swapped. I'm back in from getting the and we're almost done here. Vacuum finished, vacuum status okay with a question mark. Usually tells you if it passed the test or not, but just from looking at it, these needles haven't moved, it, it passed. All right, well, that's good news. It definitely passed the test. Uh, so now we can try and charge it back up. So it calls for 2.4 pounds of R12, uh, but this is obviously R134A. So we do a little conversion and that means we need two pounds. This is still using the factory condenser. I'd imagine the factory evaporator. It just has a different compressor and some lines, but I think two-ish is a good place to start. Let's add a little bit of oil here. We have no idea how much is in the system. Let's start off with two ounces. And it's really slow, but you can see that going down. Okay, fill our system, give us AC. This is cool, it tells you how long it's taking to charge. Sometimes you have to start the car and use the compressor to suck it in, um, but most of these machines will get the job done. Charge finished, we're good. All right, let's see if we have AC. Oh yeah. It's getting cold right away. <laughs> there we go. Look at that compressor working away. Woo! We got air conditioning. That's awesome. 
<laughs> that is such a big deal on a swap. Like, you want the swap to be complete. And, and for a car to really be complete, you need air conditioning. I mean, I live in Chicago. Half the year, we don't need it, and, and we need it. I would say my biggest pet peeve here is definitely the hood. We gotta get to the bottom of this. I just don't believe that this is the only way this can be. We gotta be able to fix this. Let's get this guy out of the way. This is a gigantic throttle body. This is really cool, but it can go in any orientation. The engine doesn't care which way it's facing. So can we just move this? We're gonna find out. Okay, so here's our seal ring. I'm just gonna pop these bolts out for now. All right, so ideally we would put it over here where it looks like we have a lot more room with the power steering pump, but okay. It hits this line right here, but I think other than that, it would work. And the harness, we'd need to extend that a little. Is that it? Is it just a power steering line issue? That would be so much easier to fix than drilling a hole in your hood and putting a metal cap in and having the paint like flake off. That makes no sense. We, we gotta try this. I'm gonna drain out this power steering fluid. We're gonna remove the line, see if this fits. All right, let's suck this out. All right. I think that's most of it. Okay, I have a line wrench on here. There we go. We're gonna lose a little bit. That's why I have our rag. Ooh, it's dripping out. Oh man, so ring's not in the best of condition. Okay, let's see. It's gotta fit here. See, these are the threaded holes. It's not just straight on like that. It barely hits this right here. Now let me put a one bolt in. Kinda get a good idea of where we are here. And let's just do another one too located exactly where it would need to be. It's not actually hitting the reservoir. That's not the issue. Wait, I see. I see what it's hitting right there. It's the throttle body hitting this aluminum spacer. I think it would clear though. So we could grind that spacer down, but before we do, let's just remove the spacer and see if the throttle body fits. I mean, I doubt that works, but why not? Spacer's coming off and then let's look inside the intake. All right, let's see what we got. What do we got? What do we got? Whoa. That is a super clean intake manifold, no oil. Wow, that is perfect. Definitely something you wanna see. I gotta say, so far, so good with this engine. Okay, let's try the simplest solution. Yeah, it definitely hits the reservoir right there. And I'm assuming, yeah, this would hit too. Let's just run it like this. We'll poke another hole in the hood. Okay, so we do need the spacer. It's okay. So this is how the spacer was. And I just wanna see here if we flip it like that, if that does anything for us. All right, this is working so far. Let's bolt it up. Okay, three bolts is good just to locate it. All right, what do we got, what do we got? Didn't seem like anything was touching, just tighten it up. No, that's not touching. I mean, it's close. It's definitely close, but the power steering pulley and the throttle body, they're, they don't move at all. So even if the engine moves, these things would move together. So that's okay. Um, I think the connector would fit in here and everything else is pretty nice. We could run it like this, although you think either way, no matter what we do, we're gonna have to figure something out uh, for this hard line here. We might end up just having to run it steel braided. So I'll have to get a male fitting on the steel braided end and just kind of do away with this metal. So maybe a little bit of a longer power steering hose, something like that. I flipped this back. I just wanted to see something. I think maybe the best option would be this. We don't have to redo anything with this steel line. The connector has plenty of room. This isn't coming close to the pulley or the reservoir. And it looks like these two bolts here, if we got extended bolts, we could use the current provisions in this spacer to go right into the intake. And then this here, this is about where this bolt would be, right in this area. We could drill that and tap it. The torque spec on these little guys is not much at all. That would be enough to hold it. And there's plenty of meat on the bottom one as well. We're gonna fix everything on this car. It's gonna be awesome. That's all we need to do. And then I got to figure out the hood. So if you guys know of a 124 chassis black hood in good condition, uh, let me know, legitstreetcars at gmail.com. I'm gonna definitely search around. I could get this one fixed, but I'll do whatever makes the most financial sense here. We got working AC. We're gonna figure out this throttle body hood thing in the next video. We are going to fix, I think, literally everything on this car. We're gonna get some new tires. We're gonna do the fuel filter, that oil pressure switch. I'm pretty sure that's all that needs. We'll do the tensioners. Whatever else we find, we are fixing this car. We're gonna sort it out. And then I think, I think it's gonna be worth way more than what I have into it. So, so far I have $11,000 into a very, very clean swap, very clean, rust-free 124 chassis E-Class 
in, I think, one of the best color combinations with the black and the gray two-tone. The interior is nice, the gauges are nice. What's really not to like about this? I know you guys are gonna say it needs a six-speed manual and I get it. That would be really, really cool. But for the purpose of this series, I'm gonna definitely drive it for a while and kind of see what I think of it long-term. Uh, and then I think we'll trade this up for something else. Who knows what it'll be? I don't know. Stay tuned in the next video. We're gonna fix everything. And then we're gonna go drive on it, beat on it, get a really good feel for the car and see what she's got. So anyway, with that, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I hope you kind of like this idea. It's something I've always had in my mind, which is trading up from something small. So maybe you guys are in the same boat and always thought something like this would be fun to do. Uh, so if you did like this video, you know what to do. Give it a big dirty old thumbs up, share the video with your friends, subscribe if you haven't already. Again, big thanks to everybody who's subscribed. We passed 1 million subscribers a couple of days ago and I'm I'm just honestly blown away. I will be doing something special, uh, kind of a 1 million subscriber recap video of my favorite parts of the channel or something like that. So we'll do that soon. But anyway, thank you guys so much. And most importantly, have a fantastic day. I will see all of you in the next video. Gotta have your five point, got it. We gotta, um, we've seen lots of crusty vehicles on this rack, but we've seen some that recovery didn't, recovery only took a few minutes. Have I ever owned an LS swapped car? Hold on a second, I gotta think about this for a second before I say it. I don't think so.